going to be quite important. Um, and and it's there's not I don't know of a company that's working on it seriously is is a neural lace but your limbic system, um, your cortex, and then um, a digital layer, sort of a third layer above the cortex. Uh, fundamental limitation is input output. So uh, we we already have uh, we, we're already a cyborg faced directly with your cortical neurons particularly. But doesn't that imply uh, surgical insertion? Not necessarily. You could go through the veins and arteries because that, that provides a, a complete... Uh yeah, yeah, did you like that little Ghost in the Shell reference? So meta, so deep. Um, let's talk about Elon Musk's neural lace. It's not a new concept. People have talked about it before, but when he says it, it happens. So I've talked a lot about this concept before in terms of like wrapping every neuron in, in everyone's brain um, and then forming it into a global brain, essentially where every human becomes a neuron in this global AI, and that's how we create AI. But neural lace is such a better word. Elon Musk has this awesome ability to create these words that people attach onto and it inspires them so that millions of people actually believe that future can happen. And yeah, being a billionaire and having a track record of pulling off amb ambitious, audacious goals, is yeah, that helps as well. So this neural lace is a, is a response to solution basically to create a symbiosis between man and machines so that AI doesn't completely take over and humans become bacteria, essentially. So a good example is like um, our, our closest relatives are chimpanzees. Um, you know, we don't really think much of them. We, we don't think they're intelligent, and yet they're probably fairly close. And the problem with natural evolution is it's really, really slow. Like, I don't think humans biologically haven't really changed in hundreds of thousands of years. Whereas AI is different, AI doesn't have those limitations. I mean, even if we create an AI that say double the intelligence of a human, it can instantly double that again and becomes four times. And then you end up with AIs that are essentially like godlike. They're billions, trillions of times more intelligent than humans. And at that point, what's the, like they would see us as bacteria, like we see bacteria now, we see this as nothing. In that Rico video, uh, Elon Musk used the, the analogy of like, uh, you'd become a house cat, but that was just um, so the audience could understand it a little bit more. It's way, way worse than that. So if that's the case, then we're presented with like two options. We either split off and we become a separate species and AI just takes off and we become bacteria, or we merge, we form a symbiosis with the AI and we become part of it. So this isn't some 100 year problem. This is gonna happen within about 15 years. Um, Ray Kurzweil, who's head of our Google engineering and famous futurist predicts that AI will overtake humans in around 2029. And so Kurzweil has similar ideas around like the neural lace. He thinks it'll happen around 2030, um, with most of our thinking in the 2040s being non-biological. Whoa. <laughs> and so another thing Musk mentioned is uh, the input-output limitations of humans. I um, mean, I've talked a lot about this before, and that's part of the reason why we need some type of implant to connect us more quickly to the machine. I mean, you think of all the activity, all the ideas that are happening in our heads, and the best method we have for getting them out is flapping our tongue and mouth up and down to push air out of our mouths. That's pretty weak. <laughs> or like body language with moving your hands and stuff. <laughs> but then also like uh, typing on a keyboard, just mashing thumbs on a keyboard, or mashing thumbs on a phone screen or tablet. I mean, it's not a fun thing to do, but you have to occasionally go back to thinking that we are monkeys, we have monkey hands, and we're just mashing on keyboards and phones and screens. Our, our eyes definitely taking a lot of inputs, um, but we're very limited in our outputs as well. And even both of them are pretty limited um, in terms of creating a feedback loop with the speed at which machines operate. Okay, so this neural lace, the ultimate version of that would be you basically inject like nanobots into your neck, they go into your brain, and they just wrap every single neuron. So they're monitoring the activity of every neuron. They're all interconnected and connected to the, to the web, you know, wirelessly somehow. <laughs> um, and they're also able to stimulate the neurons. So you get uh, basically wrapping your entire brain's connectome. But that's definitely some next level tech. The first version is probably likely to be some type of like electrode array um, that mostly reads, not so much writes. Like can't, it can't stimulate neurons, it just reads the activity. And I think that's what Musk was talking about on stage. So it'd be like a, a, a tiny little microscopic pill type device that goes into the arteries through your neck, and then once it gets there, it unfurls a mesh of electrodes. This whole concept is also called like uh, BCI, or Brain Computer Interfaces. Okay, now let's tell some of the godlike shit you can do when your brain is neurally connected to the internet. Telepathy. Externalized memory, never forgetting anything ever again, because all your memories are just uploaded and stored in the cloud. Externalized thinking and processing. If you need to access a supercomputer because to solve a hard problem you're thinking of, you just instantly connect to that supercomputer and suddenly you're a million times more intelligent. If you can stimulate the neurons in your brain, you can actually download any skill matrix style. 
Since our reality is defined by the electrical activity in our brains and the inputs and outputs, if you can intercept them and alter them, you can have instantaneous, immersive, augmented reality, virtual reality, and simulated Earth world. The ability to step not just into someone's shoes, but into their brains, to understand exactly how they think and feel, like feel, like the actual electrical activities and emotions they have. The ability to create an accurate digital uh, copy of yourself and create trillions of simulations and see which ones go in which way depending on what life situation and what life choice. The ability to fully understand the algorithm that is you, the inputs and outputs and how you think and how you behave, but then be able to go in and change that to how you want to. The ability to near instantly understand other people's ideas and opinions and reach a consensus, a consensus, a consensus <laughs> almost immediately. So no meetings, end of committees. And so now on a macro level, what this actually achieves is that because we're all essentially connected to the internet and the internet's all connected to each other, we create a global consciousness, a global brain. I think in our default state, we'll still feel like we're individuals. We'll still feel like we have individual identity. But when a neuron fires in my brain, that could actually create a cascading flow of electrical activity across the entire hive mind. So collective consciousness, collective empathy, because everyone will be thinking like very similar, or at least we'll understand each other to the point where there aren't any differences. There will be no war. There won't be any hatred in the world because we understand each other. And near instantaneous problem solving. Anytime someone in the world has an issue or a problem, um, they're instantly connected to a group of hive minds, a group of people, and supercomputers to solve that problem instantaneously. Oh shit, yeah, of course, and digital immortality, but that's kind of like one of the easy ones. And I love Musk was asked, like, uh, do you have any plans to like fund something like this or start it? And he's like, not at the moment, but if no one else does it, I guess I'll have to do it and I'll do it anyway. So that's really cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, and because of the sheer amount of like data that will be flowing through this network between everyone's brains, it'll have to be decentralized. So there won't be one company in the middle controlling everything. Google might make the implant, but that'll be it. So this might sound scary, but it actually works with all the trends we've been seeing with technology. I mean, we've, got, we've gone from like smartphones to wearables to then we're going to have our glasses like VR, AR, contact lenses, and then EEG monitoring our brain activity. That and it's a necessity for our species. I mean, unless we want to end up being the equivalent of bacteria or the house cat, then we're going to transcend. We have to, we have to merge. So some of your thoughts, the neural lace will actually allow the human species to transcend our biological limitations, merge with the machine to create a super collective artificial intelligence, a hive AI. <laughs>